probably before any of us and was out there blowing the parking lot. So thanks, Zoe. You'll probably watch this on TV right now, and that's awesome. Just kidding. Uh, we'll, we'll thank him later. But when you see him, just thank him, because uh, it's a really cool thing that he does. Hey, welcome to Community Church. I'm Michelle, and I get to be the lead pastor here. I just want to remind us of our verse for the year. Oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. This is out of the Amplified. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man, is the one who takes refuge in him. You want to be blessed? You want to be prosperous? You want to be fortunate? You want to be favored by God? You take your refuge in him, not in what the world's saying, not in what we're thinking, but in him and in his word. And it is going to be a good year, y'all. Also, our theme is the re-year, the R-E year, not re-re, mm -mm. it is the re-year, R-E colon year. And that means that this month that we just are finishing up, uh, January, is refresh, and we're rolling into reconcile for February. So we all know that reconcile means my checkbook, if, sorry for you guys who don't ever, will ever have a checkbook. Uh, the the e-transfer generation. But uh, yeah, we, we are reconciling, let's say, our bank statement. We are reconciling relationship. Reconcile is full of places where we're going to go in February. So we're glad that you're here. Um, we are honored today to have some folk from King City Teen Challenge. And uh, we are going to get to learn some stuff. Just a reminder that we are having an offering for them. You can e-transfer or I see buckets back there on the hub that Felicia will be holding uh, triumphantly or she will ind indicate them right on her head right there. That's awesome. Thank you, Felicia. Okay, let's just pray. Father God, thank you for today. Oh, thank you that this day with all the snow and everything is the day that you have made, Lord God. I thank you that you gave us this day to show you off, Lord, that we can become more like you, that we can show folk the good, your goodness through our lives, Lord God. And we accept that challenge. We accept the challenge of saying thank you, of being grateful, of knowing exactly where every good and perfect thing in our life comes from because it's only you. Lord, you are so good and you are so great. Forgive us this week if we boxed you up a little bit because it was convenient. Father God, help us to unbox you and see you in all of your glory. Give us a glimpse of you, Lord, that we can understand you more. Father, we desire to come in to your throne room together. So we're here, Lord, and we're saying, oh, we're coming. We want to worship you. We want to adore you. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. And we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, we got some, did everybody look at their prayer requests this morning that came at 7? No? Oh, that's so weird. Um, <laughs> we, uh, Roz Vanderboom, our, our, our Vanderbooms, her mom, it doesn't look like her mom is going to uh, be with us much longer. So if you can just be praying for Roz and Rob, and Chris, and Abby, and Tim. Uh, Roz's dad's uh, mom's name is Jill. Her dad is Jeff. And her dad was just transferred onto the same floor at the long-term care home where her mom is. So isn't that a cool blessing that he gets to be there with her right now? So I love it when the Lord does that. She has served the Lord forever. So we know that when she crosses over from this life to the next, it's going to be to see Jesus. So we're excited for her. We're going to come around the family and we're going to grieve with them and we're going to pray for peace and comfort for them. So if you see them in the next little bit, um, make sure that you just connect with them if you would. That would be awesome. There's about a thousand more announcements, so I'm going to ask Marika to come up first because she's awesome. Hi, Marika. You and Trev did a great job last week. I just want to say thanks. And 
And you can do announcements forevermore. <laughs> and everything else. You can speak. To oh, well, I don't know. Um, our glow party, our black light crafts and games, is on Wednesday, February 1st. Um, all children aged kindergarten to grade five can come. And it's going to be really, really fun. Um, our encounter night is yes. next Sunday, the 5th. I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. It's the 5th, yeah. 6.30. Um, another really amazing time together, just worshiping God. And Does everybody know what Encounter is? We are having um, Glad Tidings worship team come in at uh, 6.30, and they're going to come and just lead us in worship. Yep. And We're going to pray. We're going to do communion. It's just going to be a good time of soaking in. It's going to be amazing. Last time they came, it was awesome. Awesome. Um, and then on Valentine's Day, uh, parents, any parents who want a break, want to go get some dinner or even have the house to yourself for a couple hours, 5.30 to 8, um, we're welcoming all the kids to come here and we're going to do some Valentine's Day crafts and activities uh, while you can go and do whatever you need to do uh, for yourself. So registration, um, is on the website, I believe, and <laughs> on Instagram as well. Awesome. Jeff Moore? I think that's it. Okay. Yeah? All right. I'll take over. Okay. okay. So Coldest Night is coming up on the 25th of February. They would either, they would like us to be cheerleaders as folk are doing the walk. Everybody's familiar with Coldest Night, right? There's a two-kilometer uh, walk or there's a five-kilometer walk. Folks are sponsored, and then uh, Eagle's Nest uses that money as a large part of their fundraiser for the year. So um, we're in connection with them. They've asked us to either put a team in, or, or we could do both of these things, which would be awesome. So if anybody wants to do a sponsored team, uh, connect with me, and we'll get that all set up. It'll be uh, maybe team community. I don't know what we call it. Um, yeah, I probably won't be walking. And... Uh, What? Oh, we have a video. You know what? So why don't we watch the video about it instead? They'd also like us to be cheerleaders. So uh, if you don't want to walk, feel free to sign up to be a cheerleader. Spiritual care with the Salvation Army. Since we're both invested in people dealing with hurt, hunger, and homelessness, we're excited to be participating in the coldest night of the year events here in downtown Hamilton. We are both passionate about bringing a deep hope to the inner city of Hamilton. And we would love it if you would join us on February 25th to walk and learn more about the important work being done through our ministries. So that's downtown Hamilton. We're doing uptown Waterdown. Uh, the, one of the routes is around the parade route that we usually do. And then uh, our monies are going to go to Eagle's Nest. So that's awesome. Uh, just uh, if you want to sign up to be a cheerleader, which would be fantastic, do it soon. There's 10 spots. She said that they would open more up for us if we want to go en masse. So uh, if, we had, if you go there and there's not a cheerleader spot available, then just uh, let me know and we'll get some more opened up. Uh, ladies, you need to save this date, March 3rd and 4th. Uh, for the IF gathering, which is going to be held here. Uh, the, the third in the evening, fourth. I'm not going to give you any details because it's not my thing. All I'm going to say is save the date and get ready for all the deets next Sunday. It's just going to be awesome because every mystery shall be revealed then. Right, Felicia? Yay! <laughs> Uh, guys, you guys are done your first round of Bible study, your Jonah Bible study. I want to put you absolutely on the spot right now and uh, ask if anybody who was at the Bible study has anything that they want to say to recommend Bible study. Guys, getting together on a Thursday night at 8 o'clock right now. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roger, you're going to be back. <laughs> Good to see you. That's awesome. Okay, Dave loves this. He loves having Bible study. He says it's not in his wheelhouse. I say nay, nay. It's awesome. Um, last thing, uh, encounter, and that's it. 
oh my goodness, your next session begins after the week of the Super Bowl or during the week of the Super Bowl. Is that correct? And next week you're going to have a trailer. Oh, you have it right now? Okay, that was a yes. We've got to figure out, you know you've been married like almost 30 years and you're still not getting the signals right? And it's like, oh, Michelle, you're hurting. Okay, that's it for announcements. Praise God. Everybody, let's stand up. We're going to get into some worship as the team comes up here. As they're coming up, I need one person, just one person today to let us know what God has done in your life this week. Go. Loudly and robustly from the diaphragm. Because I can talk forever. Not a one, eh? Giving you energy and strength. Anybody have energy this week that they maybe need it? Awesome. That's great, Natasha. Okay. Lord God, thank you for the time to worship today.
Spirit, you are so here. Your presence is with us, and we are so thankful. If you can't sense, Holy Spirit, open your heart up just a crack. Oh, because he wants to pour into you all the peace that you need right now. He has hope for you. He has a miracle for you. Put up your hand right now. Just slip it up. If you need the Lord to touch you somehow, some way in your life, Nancy and Tim are going to come and pray, and they're going to pray for you. Oh, Spirit of God, I thank you that you will never run out of the miracles that we need. You have every single thing that we are ever going to need, Lord, and we just thank you that you are generous. You are a good father, and you are a generous father. And I thank you, Lord, that you are so much more willing to pour out on your children than we are even to acknowledge that you want to. So, Lord, this morning we open our hearts and we say, oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, yeah, let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and our, his love endures forever. Lord, we thank you for this time of praise and worship. Lord, and we thank you for all of these opportunities we've had to pray in this service, Lord. And we thank you for your word that gives us guidance about how to pray. And I, I read from James chapter 5. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make that sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So let's, we all have needs, so let's, Heavenly Father, we just lift all of these needs up to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for the needs of everybody and each other in this church. Thank you. And just even uh, from Matthew chapter 11, at that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do this. And then in verse um, 28, then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And so we will be in the prayer room if you would like us to um, agree with you on something you want to take to the Father today, we'll, we'll be there. Amen. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Tim. Like they said, they're going into the prayer room right now. We're also going to, when they pass through and they're safely in the gym, we're going to release our kids. They're going to go upstairs. You may run in a moment. Just three, two, one, go. And have a hoot upstairs, you guys, the rest of us. We're going to take a few minutes for a coffee break, and then we're going to come back here and hear from Teen Challenge. Bless you. Thank you.
partying. Uh, I was introduced to ecstasy and speed and quickly escalated to cocaine as my drug of choice. I spent most of my 20s in addiction uh, to substances before I hit my rock bottom and surrendered to the Lord. Um, I just, I guess I just want to share that I grew up in the church. Um, my parents, um, we grew up in like a Pentecostal church, so very like holy roller kind of churches, right? Um, I grew up with, you know, um, people raising their hands and praising the Lord and speaking in tongues and falling on the floor and all that crazy stuff. And um, so I had been around it and I had known, um, known that kind of thing, um, but I never really had a relationship with Christ. I uh, went to Sunday school, went to like youth youth groups and things like that, um, but there was no connection. It was just um, kind of like out of obligation, you know, my parents would make me go and uh, never really connected with Jesus, never really knew who he really was uh, until I came to Teen Challenge and uh, he showed me who he was and uh, I fell in love. <laughs> Uh, so it's been almost 10 years since I graduated from this program, and um, there I go again. <laughs> um, I think I'm just really grateful. Um, you know, I'm, I'm married now uh, to another Teen Challenge graduate, actually. Uh, he graduated from the London, Ontario Men's Center. Uh, we're going on six years, um, but God has blessed the desire in my heart to become a mom. Uh, so I have a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old, and... A when I think about them and my husband and just the family that I have now um, and the hope um, and God has restored everything in my life and uh, just listening to your testimony too, you know, and, and going to listen to Lorraine's and I'm sure many of yours, you know, God has really pursued us and he is pursuing us and uh, he wants to take us even deeper than we've ever been with him. Um, So if you're struggling or you know someone who is, I want you to watch this video and I want you to come see us after the service. We are here to help and we are here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so let's play uh, this next video. Addiction didn't start the way you thought it would. It started one choice at a time, one day at a time. But those choices quickly built up. Then came the fear, the shame, and the guilt. And by the time you wanted it all to stop, you couldn't. Teen Challenge knows that the choices that became the addiction change an individual inside and out. That's why the road to recovery is so hard. So much so that people on their own don't know where to start or how to get help. The road to recovery starts small. It starts by asking for help. Thousands of individuals and families began their journey to recovery at a Teen Challenge Center. By walking alongside those trapped in addiction, Teen Challenge has helped men and women find freedom from their personal addiction and has helped restore them to their families and communities. There is help, there is hope, and there is freedom from addiction. Start your road to recovery today. can put up that logo again. Um, so Jesus came to seek and save the lost, bind up the brokenhearted, and he calls us to do the same. At this time, I'd like to invite Lorraine to share her testimony. So let's make her feel welcome. Good morning, church. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. My name is Lorraine, and this is my story of how Jesus rescued me from the darkness of addiction after 31 years. I grew up in a small town called Tomogamy, where I lived with my mom, dad, two older sisters, and an older brother. From my early years in school, I was bullied because I had difficulty concentrating and was placed in a special class. This bullying continued throughout my school years, and I would ask myself, what is wrong with me? What did I do wrong? I kept thinking it was me. I was sexually abused when I was five years old by my dad's friend, who threatened to hurt my family if I told anyone. Years later, I tried to tell my siblings, but it wasn't until my parents found out that this man 
had a history of abuse that anyone believed me. At nine years old, I tried alcohol for the first time. I remembered seeing my parents drink and how it affected them. They looked happy and I wanted the same. My parents were very family oriented and I remember that we did a lot of outdoor activities together, but my dad did not show affection and was strict, protective and verbally abusive, especially to my mother. This led to my rebellion and at the age of 15, I left home and moved in with the family whose children I had been babysitting for and became their live-in nanny. I still struggled because of the pain of rejection I felt from my own family. I actually wrote a suicide note to this family, thanking them for everything they had done for me. But thank God that my planned suicide did not happen. During my high school years, my rebellion continued. I became friends with others who were making similar choices. And I began to experiment with drugs. My bad behavior continued until the authorities stepped in and I settled down for a while. When I was 23, I married a truck driver who was away a lot and we had three children together. We had both quit smoking and drinking before we married, but I continued using other substances such as opiates, meth and cocaine, and I was unfaithful to my husband in order to get them. Five years into my marriage, my dad passed away. He, did not, he didn't show me affection as I was growing up, and the day he died was the first time I remember him telling me that he loved me. This made me feel even more neglected and like he had been absent my whole life. I realized now that I was always looking for love in all the wrong places, just so I could feel wanted and loved by anyone. I struggled to raise our children and things quickly went downhill. My family held an intervention and my husband reported me to Children's Aid Services, but my daily drug use continued. My marriage fell apart and I lost custody of my children. I went directly to the streets to get what I wanted and my substance use was completely out of control. I was so desperate and wanted help, but I didn't know how to get it after relapsing so many times. I felt like a failure and thought it was just a matter of time before someone would find me dead. One day I received a call telling me that my mom had passed away. I had already lost my dad, my children, and now my mother. At this point I fell down to my knees and cried out to God to help me live or let me die. I felt so lost and did not know who I was or where I belonged. But deep inside, I always knew there was someone watching over me throughout my life. Eventually, a close friend introduced me to church in a Bible study. And I began attending on a regular, whoops, okay, <laughs> on a regular basis. I felt like I was at home. I learned that things I had believed to be true my whole life were all lies and discovered real truth. I had to fall many times to finally realize that there was something better. The day came when I surrendered myself to Jesus, realizing he was my only hope. I was baptized in July of 2018 and had such a desire to seek the Lord, but continued my drug use. I was pushing away the most precious things in my life, my children, my family, and my friends, until I reached my rock bottom and walked through the teen challenge doors on February the 4th, 2019. Walking into the unexpected was scary, but I was so sick and tired and I knew this was my last resource. I had already attempted 10 treatment programs in six years. I graduated the Teen Challenge program in 2020 and continued as a phase four <clears throat> and phase five staff. I worked as a kitchen manager building skills that I never knew I had from meal planning to training other ladies in the program, showing them that they too could reach their full potential just as I did. On January 31st, I completed the Phase 5 program and began to work outside of Teen Challenge in the food industry using my newfound skills. I loved my job, but I jumped into it too quickly without a clear plan. No home, no home church, Bible study, etc. No plan is the recipe for disaster. I ended up working long hours and sometimes double shifts. As days would go by, I saw that I was getting physically and mentally exhausted unable to maintain and express boundaries. I made very poor choices. I quickly forgot about God and the tools I was supposed to use. I was back in full-blown relapse, lying to my supports and feeling convicted, but ignoring it. So the phase four, phase five programs are right after you become a student, then you do the internship for a year and then you can work there. And I ended up being the coordinator there. And um, then I left there and I'm now now I'm back. So I re-enter the doors 
on October the 21st, 2022, humbling myself before the Lord. I stand here today knowing it is crucial to do the things that we are called to do. I need to listen and be obedient to God, go to church, be in constant fellowship with other believers, ask for help, set strong boundaries, and live the life God intended for me. My children are depending on me to find my ways so I can set an example for them and help encourage them to live a life with Christ. It says in Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the, le the years the locusts have eaten. I fully believe this scripture, and he is restoring, my, he is restoring me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I, I was blind, but now I see. I'm not the woman I used to be, and I'm becoming the woman God, God wants me to be. I'm not only a sister, a mother, and a friend, but I'm a child of God. I am loved by the Most High King. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Thank you, and God bless. Thanks, Lorraine. Yeah, Lorraine was just uh, mentioning our program. I have these brochures at the back. They're called Get Help Today. And these brochures have everything you need to know about Teen Challenge. Um, steps to get into the program, whether you're eligible, um, because I know there's probably some people that can come alongside, uh, family members or friends or someone you know. Uh, in here, we have our five phases of program. Uh, each phase is approximately four months long, and it's just like the next step, and the next step, and the next step um, for successful uh, sobriety. Uh, but what we covet at Teen Challenge is that Jesus is the one that changes us from the inside out. Um, and that's what makes us different uh, than other programs. Uh, we don't receive any government funding. Um, so everything that we um, get goes directly into the program um, for us to be able to run it. Um, and I was mentioning earlier how much we just appreciate um, our regular givers because they give us that sustainability to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, so I have one more video and then I'm going to close. Addiction doesn't just happen. The journey to addiction many times begins with tremendous personal hurt, pain, trauma, and despair. And so finding freedom from addiction doesn't just happen either. The journey to recovery begins with loving individuals, daily walking with men and women, helping them to face their past generational wounds, their inabilities to cope, or lack of personal identity, so they can start the transformation into the person they were intended to be. Now this journey of recovery would not be possible if it weren't for the incredible faithfulness and generosity from supporters like you. At Teen Challenge, ongoing partnerships are much more than the financial backbone of our ministry. They are a testimony to all those still in addiction that even in the midst of their brokenness, they can know they are worth investing in. By joining the journey and becoming part of our incredible community of monthly supporters, composed of passionate, generous, driven people like yourself, you are not only helping someone on their personal road to recovery, you are becoming a key part of their victory story. Your financial support shows those in our program that you believe there's still hope. It is not too late for help and you are willing to invest in them to help them find it. For any reoccurring monthly or annual amount, join the journey. And your support of our 12-month faith-based in-residence program proves to those in our care that past life choices do not have to dictate the future. And that life, purposeful, productive life after addiction is possible. Support Teen Challenge Canada and join the journey today. Visit teenchallenge.ca. So we hope that you'll prayerfully consider financially partnering with us, whether it's a one-time gift or by joining the journey sponsorship, sponsorship community. The great thing about the journey is that you can choose a monthly amount that suits you best. Uh, every 10, 20, or $40 a month can help change lives.
So if this program is of interest to you, please come see us at the table after the service. Um, I have a lot of material there as well. Um, if you'd like to put it up in your local grocery store, hand out to people at work or pass along, uh, please feel free to come get some information. Uh, some of you guys came in with the journey brochure, um, so you could take a look at that if you'd like. Uh, we also have an event coming up, and it's our annual gala. We haven't had one since 2018, I believe, so this is our first one since then. Uh, so if you like to go and have a nice dinner, three-course meal, get to dress up and go somewhere nice um, for the evening, uh, we will have tickets um, available to purchase. And this one, I believe, is at Bellevue Manor in Concord. So a, a little bit of a trek. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that, please come see us after the service. And I just want to thank you, Pastor and Church, for having us. Uh, if you have any questions, um, please come see us. Um, but just keep us in your prayers as well, um, because we covet them, and that's what helps our ministry go as well. So thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, before we go, and we're going to let everybody go just with those poignant testimonies of how, oh, look what the Lord has done. We can be part of that, and that's exciting. But if you guys are game, and I 100% suspect you are, let's pray for these ladies before they go. So do you guys want to come on up here? And uh, we're going to ask folk to come up and pray around, make it a little bit uncomfortable, which is just my way of doing things. So come on up, you guys. Let's pray for these women. We know that Father God has such good things for each of them, and we get the opportunity today to bless them and say thanks for coming, guys, especially in, like, weather and everything. For, for that You slept. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Father God, I thank you for each of these women. I thank you, Lord God, for their heart. I thank you, Lord God, for their perseverance when things looked dark. Oh, but Father, mostly I thank you for you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you continue to draw, that you, you, you spoke their name, Natasha, Lorraine, Rebecca. And you were so kind, and you lifted them up when they needed it, Lord God. And you encouraged, and you kicked them in the butt when they needed it too, Lord. And I thank you for that. Lord, I bless them for taking the path that they have taken over the last few years, lifting up and looking at you to be the author and the finisher. They don't have to finish nothing. They just have to walk alongside you because you're leading them to the finish, Lord God. And I thank you for that. I bless them right now, every step that they take, every person that they affect, Lord God, every person they speak to in their own families and in the folks around them, Lord, others at the center, Lord, and, and how when they go to churches and they touch hearts, Lord God, I bless them. And I anoint them, Lord, to, to just, oh, oh, Lord, to just speak to the, the addiction and draw it, Lord God, because it's in you that we find freedom. So, Lord God, thank you for that. We bless them. And Lord, we just pray particularly for traveling mercies, for Natasha back and forth, Lord God. And we just, we just pray that this is a really good week for these ladies and that they have a hoot and that they see you in a brand new bright way, Lord, somehow this week. And we thank you for them. Lord, we pray for those in this congregation that are struggling with addiction right now that have done a really good job of shoving it down, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, that they will see you in the shoving down, Lord God, that they do not have to hide it. They can bring it to you, and you will walk them through their addiction too, Lord God. We thank you that you are faithful to every person that comes to you and says, Jesus, I need you. I need help, Lord. So I just pray for, for folk right now <laughs> that you would be their source, that substance wouldn't be their source, but that you would be their source. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you are on people this week, that you are niggling, that you are convicting of areas in our lives, Lord, where we are just leaning on something other than you.
And Lord, we thank you that you're faithful to do it because you love us so much and you're drawing us tighter and tighter into you. We bless you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Glad you're back. Okay. It is time to hit the road, my friends. So I can't tell if it's snowing. I, I think it's probably, let's just say it's not snowing. Just drive safe and have a great week. We will see you. Uh, if you're going to glow, make sure you're here Wednesday evening. Junior highs, make sure your junior highs are here Wednesday evening so that we can have a whole lot of hoopla in this building on one night. Bless you and see you in February. <laughs> <laughs>